everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, I love to have special guests and I was actually in a store in Highlands over the summer and I picked up this book because it was so pretty on the front and then I opened it up and I thought, oh my God, that guy's so cute. I'm going to write him and ask him to be on the show and look who's here. I'm so excited. James Farmer, all the way from Perry, Georgia, on his sixth book. And y'all, you would not believe how tall this guy is because guess what? I'm standing on a box. Well, Can honey, you believe that? I do have on my boots. <laughs> well, you do have on your boots, but I am so thrilled oh, to have you, you here. Thank you. And this is such a treat. Your book is fantastic. This is Dinner on the Grounds, his sixth book. And I can tell you, I've got all of his books in there. Wonderful. Thank you. So what are we making tonight? Well, I think we've got a fun menu. You know, I've come up from Paradise to Augusta, and Paradise. I love Augusta, and I'm just thrilled to be here cooking with Vera because I grew up eating your cakes. Our yes, friends in Augusta, did. they would send them to us for everything, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And you know, he it. uses those cans now for nuts and bolts. That's right, that's right. So tonight we've got a big menu, and it's what my Mimi would call a spread. Okay. So the spread for tonight is a poached salmon, and it's simple and an easy, an easy, easy recipe. Roasted okra, if you've never roasted okra, it is going to be the way you eat okra from here on out. I've got my squash that I, you know, we do with some some feta and some thyme, and those brown Ooh. onions, you know, it's just, oh, brown the onions is just what makes it some rosemary butter to put with some skillet toast and then to finish it off an amaretta pear bake. Oh wow, well we've got a lot to do so let's get started. Let's sure thing. get started All right. with well, the Well you see I've got my tools right here and it's my hand. So what I'm going <laughs> to do is I'm going to just dredge this pan right here, sprinkle with a little bit of olive oil and what I'm going to do is have that greased up good so that our salmon really won't stick to the pan. But this is one of those things that if you have never cooked salmon before and you've got a little bit of a apprehension about it, Right. This should take the fear out of it because it's an easy thing. And you know, it's universally everybody's favorite fish to order when you go out to dinner. It so it's so wonderful good. to have a recipe that you can make at home. And you can get it. You can run to Fresh Market and get a beautiful filet like this and just have it cut. It's such a wonderful, wonderful fish. So these are the salmon filets that I'm going to throw in here. And I don't know about you, but I like to do my meat when it's a little bit of room temperature. You know, not just so, so cold. You know, right. it just cooks better and it cooks a little bit quicker. So these salmon fillets are in here. I've got some olive oil that I've just coated them with that's in the pan as well. And then the next thing we're gonna do is add some salt. We're gonna add some pepper and some lemon and some dill. Salmon and dill is one of my favorite, favorite combinations. Well, now over here, all this okra is so beautiful. And you, you actually told me a story about when you're in Cashers about the wonderful farmer's market there. That's and right. That they have, the, you know, it's just even cut this way. James, I've started for, you know, everybody loves the fried okra that you do at, at events, which I'm sure you've done before. But to even cut it like this instead of in the traditional little bite-sized pieces is so interesting because it's such a pretty vegetable. Well, thank but you. But these have all been cut, and now the same olive oil, we're just going to yep, sprinkle oil, salt, and pepper. a little bit of that over. That's the rule of thumb with roasting, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And speaking of salt and pepper, would you do me the favor and put a little salt and pepper on these? since Because you've got your fish? hands, absolutely. That's right. But can you smell this dill? It's I mean, wonderful. It's just amazing. But just sprinkle with some salt and pepper. And salt and pepper are great friends. They like to be together and they like to be together all the time. <laughs> well, you know, etiquettely, you're always supposed to pass them I know, together. I They're not them. supposed to be separated. They're married. They are know? married. <laughs> they, they go together. I love just that fresh pepper on there. But something that my grandmother always told me was that we eat with our eyes first. Right. So before we've taken that first bite, we want to feast visually, and that's pretty already uh, before it's even out of the oven. Well, and you know, when you're having people over, if you've done this ahead, and everybody's, you know, how everybody always ends up in the kitchen, yes, and they walk out. in and they see that, they can smell it, it's just beautiful, it just turns out great. Well, how it finishes cooking is with a little bit of white wine, and that's the poaching. And, you know, poaching is just cooking something in a liquid, and so I'm going to just sprinkle some of this white wine on here. And um, I can I can drink this now because I'm a, I'm a recovering Baptist. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. You know when you're when you're a Baptist in the deep south, you can't you can't drink wine and well um, not publicly. <laughs> okay, so now we have two things to go in the oven. Yes. What temperature are we going to do the salmon? Um, I usually about 350 to 400, depending on how much time you have. Okay. But um, 400 is really a great great mark right there, and you cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes. A little less if you want it rawer. Perfect. Rare, we'll come back. As you can see, he's quite the character. And I want you to join us for the next segment because we're going to get started on that squash. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, then you've already missed a lot. What have you been doing? James Farmer from Perry, Georgia, is here as my special guest. And he is on his sixth book, y'all, and it's called Dinner on the Grounds. That's right. And I know you grew up saying, well, we're going to have dinner on the grounds. We, yes, yes. You know, after church, we'd have it, or it'd be a family reunion, or whatever it was. But it's just a great southern saying. And, and I thought, And people perfect. would bring their favorite dish. That's and right. And so what you've done is collaborated all of these special That's dishes. That's right. That's right. And we are making something very special in this segment. This is one, it's, it's kind of a, taking an update of that classic southern of sauteed squash with onion, but it's baking it with some feta and thyme. And you know, squash being a great summer, uh, autumn crop, those herbs that really bring out those flavors and complement each other, and thyme is one of those. Oh man, So well, it's just never great. enough. So I don't know about you, but the sight, sound, and smell of hot butter just, it kind of gets me going. So I know, it's just dancing in it's, the pan. It's, it's calling for some onions. So we've got some onion chopped here, and are you ready? Yes. That's, I mean, that, that sound, that sound is right up there with angels singing, if I say so myself. So, <laughs> all right. Y'all know he's from the South now. Well, I like to season with each layer, so I'm going to salt and pepper this while, while it's okay. in there. So I've got a little bit of salt. Is that a Vidalia onion? That's a Vidalia onion. Now, how far away is that from Perry? We're still about an hour and a half, two okay. hours from Perry, but Perry, you know, is the about the geographic center of Georgia. We're two hours from everything. So. And he was so funny, y'all, coming, coming up here. Um, we were doing the book signing, and he was sending me a text message saying he was behind every chicken truck and log truck coming from Augusta. I thought, I thought, well, I could either say we're running late, or I could give the real reason, and there's a log <laughs> truck all the way from Gray to Green, I, Greensboro. I love that. So, okay, now while you're doing that, I'm going to get started on this butter. All right. And the finished product for this rosemary butter is so attractive. Thank I mean, you. I would love to put that on the table yeah. if I was having a dinner party for any kind of bread. But this is skillet toast. Skillet toast. And you know, Vera, the story is awesome. All right, so you were kind enough to ask me about some of the stories in, in my recipe. And, you know, you ask a southerner for a recipe, and they don't tell you how many cups it is, first off. They tell you the story. Exactly. And my skillet toast, I mean, skillet toast is just such an involved recipe. It's toast and a skillet. But what it is, is you have to... No, my Mimi was just this wonderful woman from, from Bainbridge, and she would take the train from Bainbridge to Savannah. Y'all, it was the Nancy Hanks. That's right. She would take it from Bainbridge to Savannah to spend a weekend or a week or whatever time it was with her aunt. And her aunt and Savannah lived in a beautiful home. I think it was on Jones, or I can't remember the street right now. And she had skillet toast and hot tea every morning for breakfast. And my Mimi, little Sarah Ann Bates at the time, <laughs> When she grew up, she decided, I will have skillet toast and hot tea every morning because that's what ladies in Savannah eat. We have skillet toast with everything. Well, the skillet toast uses this wonderful rosemary butter, and I have to two sticks of butter. Um, I've done a clove of garlic minced. I've got fresh rosemary and lemon zest. Tell me, do you have rosemary growing at home? Oh, of course. Well, you know rosemary grows where strong women live, so obviously, <laughs> obviously here. <laughs> So, all right, I've got the onion brown. I'm going to add the squash to it. And that's just another one of those things that every good southern recipe starts with, brown the onion first. Right. So we've got this all. I'm going to saute it in here together, get every bit of it out. And, the, and another reason to use those wonderful Vidalias is because they've got such natural sugar that they're going to brown really it's well. It's in here. Okay, now I'm going to start spreading. Of course, I would love to use the pretty but I'm not gonna mess it up and since this is so pliable and ready to go, I'm just going to go ahead and coat this and we put it face down, face down. in the mm -hmm. pan. That's right. And so get All that in there and it'll just toast up here in the skillet. Turn it up turn it just too. a little bit. Okay. I'll keep stirring the squash. I add a little more salt and pepper. I like to, you know, season with the layers. And I'm gonna go on and sprinkle some thyme in there too. Okay. And I'm using dried thyme. So Vera, if you're using thyme from your garden, you know you need more of a fresh herb rather than a dryer because when it's dried, it's more concentrated. Okay. So I use That's just a, a kind of a, a, a heavy bit of it right there, but can't you just smell that? Oh, oh, absolutely. I'm having fun with this. Well, we've got a little bit of work to do here and we've got to go on break. So All we're right. gonna keep cooking this That's down. Right. I'm gonna keep working on this skillet toast because I'm a Southern lady too. I wanna be just like Mimi. So come back and join us in just a few minutes and we'll get started on the pear bake, Her right? Oh, yum, yes, Wonderful. yes. All right, I've got a beautiful plate of pasta with freshly cut parsley, freshly shaved Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of butter. Even my grandchildren would eat this. 
So now we're gonna add some questionable ingredients. Some baby portobello mushrooms, and my favorite, steamed asparagus. Well, some of you may be frowning now because I know asparagus, bless their hearts, are not on everyone's favorite list. So what are you gonna do if this t comes to your place and this is what you're supposed to eat for dinner? My advice is always to try it. You never know, you might have developed a, a, t a love for okra and you didn't even know it. But it's very important that you try not to make it so apparent that you don't like that, unless of course it's something that you're allergic to. So try new things, but try not to make it so obvious that it was something that you didn't like. I think and so. And I'm, I'm up on my, my tiptoes. <laughs> if you're just joining us, this is James Farmer from Perry, Georgia, that I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the last couple of days. He was here to do a book signing at Three Monkeys. We had the best uh, time last did. night. Made a lot of new friends, and we love you Aiken people. Thank and you. And you're so loyal to the show. Thank you. Um, but while we were away from the break, you were busy as a bee. I what was. Were you doing? Well, I finished off my squash. And so what I did was I browned the onion and browned the squash in there sauteed those up, seasoned them with salt and pepper, and then I threw that thyme in there, you know, to get that herb flavor in there. Once that was good and brown, I went ahead and put it into a greased uh, casserole dish. I used a little bit of olive oil just to grease it in there. Threw it in there, finished it off with some panko on top. That's that Japanese breadcrumb. Right. You can use in your crushed crackers if you can't find it. And then I took a little more thyme and sprinkled it on top, threw it in the oven, and it's it's we're going to get to see that in just a minute if on I say the plate. So myself, so. Okay, so now what have we got going? All right, well, we're going to fry some macaroni and cheese. So how do you improve macaroni and cheese? You fry it. You fry it. So what I did was I took macaroni and cheese, my favorite recipe that I've got in my book, and you, the day before, you make some little macaroni and cheese. Okay. You know, these mac and cheese balls here, and then you freeze them. And here's the thing about frying. Some people are scared of it. Right. And I want to take the fear out of frying. And one of the things to remember is wet, dry, fry. Wet, dry, fry. And that's just, that's just, that, I mean, that could be a dance. I mean, that could be all kinds of things. So <laughs> what it is, is frying is chemistry. And if you can understand the science of right. it, I think you can take some of the fear out of it. So these are the frozen mac and cheese balls here. Okay. And then the, my wet is going to be egg. I'm going to do a little egg wash. So I'm just going to crack a couple eggs right here. Yeah, and we were saying that, that this the smell of the fry. And, you know, this time of the year, everybody's having fairs. And this reminds me of the fair. Yes. Smelling the oil. And well, you know where I'm it, from is home of the Georgia National Fair. I know, fair. the Georgia National Fair, you guys. I'm understanding that I need to put this on my calendar to go to Penny. You better hop in the truck with me and head home. I'm because telling you. It's great. I'm, I'm ready to yeah, go. Smelling this hot oil. So here's a little egg wash. So this is the wet, and then the dry, and then the fry. So okay. here's what we've got. I've got the macaroni and cheese balls here, and they're still still frozen, but we're gonna put that frozen in the hot oil. Okay. That's part of the chemistry. Right. And, and getting them and getting them going. So I'm gonna take one of these and we're gonna wet it. And then we're gonna dry it. And those are the panko. And those are the panko breadcrumbs. You can use cracker crumbs or anything, but I love panko and it's a little bit of a mess, but that's oh well, okay. that's what that's part of it. And then if you're worried about the hot oil, just use you know a spatula, a slotted spatula, or whatever. But you want to drop that puppy in there. Ooh, Ooh well, we did that's perfect. the sound we want. That is exactly right. So okay, if you would, but if you had put this in at room temperature, it would just fall apart. That's, that's right. That's why they need to be frozen. So that's perfect. I'm gonna mix up a couple more, but I want to walk you through my pear amaretto. Okay, bake. all right. So we've got these beautiful Bartlett pears. That's right. They've been halved and cored out. That's right. And I sometimes will squeeze lemon juice or put some fruit fresh on just to keep them from turning brown. Okay, they look wonderful. And then what I'll do is get you to put a pat of butter. Now you said a pat was a, pat, a tablespoon. A, tab, a pat is a tablespoon. A pat a tablespoon, a pat or a tablespoon on each pear half. Okay. Put it down there into that into that little cavity little that's cavity. created. That's right. And then these are the ginger. Ginger snaps that have been crushed, crushed. and have a little bit of melted butter in them. And then what I want you to do is once you've got that, I want you to drizzle them. And I want you to drizzle them with some amaretto, which is that almond liqueur. Ooh. So I'm gonna get the whole pan going, but for time's sake, I'll just do these two. Oh, yummy. What an easy, wonderful dessert. It is. So you can we're do it gonna with keep, so many fruits. Yeah. We're gonna keep frying. I'm gonna finish these off. We're gonna get 
these in the oven, and when we come back, we're going to plate everything, Ooh. and James and I are going to have a party. I can't wait. Can't wait so either. come back with us after the break. Thanks, y'all. Welcome back, and James, I've got to tell you, if this is not dinner on the grounds, I don't know what is, and honestly, we've had the best time I sure have. tonight, and it's just, this display of food is fabulous on the, on the, on the sheet pan that it was on <laughs> and the baking dish, but it's going to be even better when we get it plated. So while we were away during the break, I got the whipped cream finished, mm -hmm. yep. and James made a wonderful point. Yeah, whipping cream is, y'all, there's no calories involved if you whip it yourself. So <laughs> what I did was I and made- I know that's true. I made Vera whip it up really good. So what you do is don't ever use a plastic bowl. You need to use a metal or a glass bowl and you need to use a metal whisk. Put it in the freezer, in the refrigerator, get the bowl cold, make yes. sure your cream is cold, whip it up, and y'all, it's literally chemistry, changing a liquid to a solid, a sprinkling, a powdered sugar, maybe in a splash of vanilla if you want. You can flavor it so many ways, but y'all, this is basic And it is cream. just, and it, I did it by hand, and honestly, I was so going like this. So that's it right. Was, it was great. Well, everything just looks beautiful. Oh, thank you. So let's get started. The okay. salmon. we got the salmon here with the dill and the lemon there, and I'm going to um, scoop up some of these little okra roasted oh, pieces I right here. I just love the way Isn't they it so look. so pretty how the okra seeds have now, I'm going to fix this for my helping. Okay. I mean, so it's not going to be something skimpy. So okay. there's that one. And then I'm going to just reach over. I tell you what, let, would you throw a couple oh, of those I macaroni? Find, I want to find the prettiest Ooh, one. Oh, yeah, there Look it is. Look at that. Oh, there you, you go. You want that like right there? Right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. Okay. And maybe I'm, one yeah, Maybe one more. more. That's my starter one. Okay, you said and then, yes. There you go. And then I'm going to get some of the squash here. And the squash, here, let me hold the thank you. I finished it off in the oven with some panko and some some feta cheese, and see the feta's turned brown. I mean, feta makes it better, so it's just so good. But that onion has browned in there. I mean, and did it kind of look like fall? Oh my have gosh! Like the, the appetizers there, and you've got all these beautiful flavors. And now we need one more little element: the skillet toast. So that's got our wonderful butter on it, and I'm just kind of breaking. Yeah, it. just kind of break oh, it yeah. in half. Break it in half, and throw that good little medallion on there, and stack it on there. And that is it's so yum. pretty. I love it. And then I am going to take, we thought we would toast Ooh, I to love dessert. It. Yum. So let me find the biggest, fattest pear here. For me, I would expect nothing less. All oh, right. Yum. And then we've mm. got a little bit, I like a lot of whipped cream. Yes, please don't so skimp on it. Perfect. That, and we've got a nice peak, and then we've got a little dab little of mint. lime, and I'm going to do lime, one more. Okay. But you know, these sorts of foods, as you could see, there was a lot of time spent during the show, but so many of these things you can do ahead. Absolutely. You, we did the macaroni and cheese balls ahead. That's right. And then all you had to do at the last minute was to fry. fry. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times I'll use my fry daddy for something like oh, that. I love really, something like that. Really love quick. That. That's super. And then the um, the squash you can do the day before or a couple of days before. You can, you can do it and freeze it, correct? You could. It freezes beautifully. I love that line in Still Magnolias where it says it freezes beautifully. <laughs> it just freezes beautifully. <laughs> and then these pears, even if they were done the day before. They're and fine to reheat them. But you said bring it back to life. Wake it up. Wake, Wake it, it up. up. Wake them up. You know, so. it's, it's the sayings, it's the storytelling that makes dinner on the grounds. So again, I certainly want to suggest this cookbook. And you know, it's one thing to think that a cookbook is beautiful and that it has a wonderful story. But I can tell you firsthand that last night at the book signing, I did six of these recipes myself. And y'all know I am a <laughs> snob when it comes to pimento cheese. And I loved his pimento cheese recipe. It says a lot. <laughs> Mimi's sauce mm -hmm. that we, is in that book. We you Mimi's guys, sauce, everything. We don't everything. I brought it home for the book signing. And my husband wants me to serve it on everything now. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have it on everything from salad hey, to pork. Hey, sit still. You can put it on it. I mean, it, it was fabulous. But you, the recipes are so authentic. Thank you. They're, they're all over the place in terms of the time of day that you can use them. It's mm -hmm. a very valuable book. 
James is going to actually be back in Augusta right. in April right. for the Sacred Heart mm -hmm. Garden Show. So if you weren't able to come to the book signing and you want to have an opportunity to, to meet this fine Southern gentleman, I suggest that you <laughs> do that. And then I want to thank Three Monkeys mm -hmm. for hosting Absolutely. us last night. We had the most wonderful book signing and they've done the best job. We're all ready for the month of November and for fall with all of our colors. Flowers on Broad, just you would have thought that they were in here picking out flowers that would go so well with what we're doing tonight. Um, I just want to thank them. And as always, our recipes, James has given you a, a head start on this cookbook because he shared some of the recipes there on NBC26.tv, so be sure to look for those. But as always, James, you know, I know you have some sayings, but I have some sayings too. And my saying is no matter what you do, do it in good taste. So I want to toast to toast you. To you. Absolutely. Cheers on a wonderful dessert, a wonderful new friend. Oh, absolutely. I don't want this to be the last time. It won't. And I want all of you to come back and join me again next Saturday night for another episode Thank you, of Vera. the Very Vera I Show. It. Cheers. Cheers